Good morning, church. Welcome to another Sunday morning service. I just want to um, thank God for all of you, for life, for strength, for vigor, for protection, particularly at such a time as this. Our God has been good, he's been faithful, and we thank him for sustaining us and letting us see yet another Sunday morning. And I encourage you this morning that as you come, you cast away all your cares, all your burdens, even unto him. And I assure you that this morning, the Lord will lift you up and the Lord will encourage you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's say a short word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We magnify you, we lift you up. We thank you, Lord, for another day that you have made. We declare that today is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us alive to see yet another day. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us thus far, even in such a time and season of life as this. Thank you, Lord, for provision. Thank you, Lord, for protection. Thank you, Lord, Father Almighty, for hiding us in your tabernacle in the time of trouble. Thank you, Lord, Father Almighty, for being our all in all, for never leaving or forsaking us. Father, as we come into your presence this morning, as we lift up our voices this morning before you, we ask, O oh God, Spirit of praise, that you come down from your holy habitation and dwell in our midst this morning. We ask, O oh God, that you will reveal your glory, you will reveal Jesus unto us, you will reveal your power and your presence even this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that as the word comes forth this morning, it will be a word in due season, a word that will excite us, a word that will encourage us, a word that will lift us up in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We declare this morning service open in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Divine Holy Spirit. As we have come expectant this morning, we ask, O oh God, that you'll meet each and every one of us as our level of expectation in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Holy Spirit of God, that this new week will be a week of your divine favor for each and every one of us, a week of your divine abundance for us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you continue to protect us, you continue to uphold and keep each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your free reign in our midst this morning and do what only you can do. And at the end of it all, let today be another glorious day of encouragement, of lifting in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I'm never so excited to be in God's presence hey, this morning. Can I get a witness in the house? We worship you in this place. For many people watching us online, Hallelujah. lift your hands and give him praise. Hey! See you. 
church welcome to abundant grace church online service my prayer is that god will meet you at the very point of your need in jesus name and above all you will be blessed today praise the lord let's go into the world let's pray heavenly father in the name of jesus the name which is above every name we come to you today father we come boldly to your throne father we pray in the name of jesus that you will speak to us and meet us at the very point of our need. Holy Spirit of God, we pray, Lord, that we be a doer of your word and not just hear us only. Let your word illuminate every darkness in our life in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that your word we heal, we deliver, we set free, we encourage, we build up, and we set free in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we worship you. We pray that your word will not return to you void. But it will accomplish that which we have set it to accomplish in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give all the praise and all the glory. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm really excited this morning. Uh, we're going to continue. Last week we talked about not to lose focus. We're going to continue from there. So today, the title of, this, uh, of my sermon today is Living a Life of Purpose. That is the series. But be intentional today we examine be intentional amen so it's part of living a life of purpose but we are going to look at being intentional the first thing we need to understand that we are created in the image of god and according to his likeness we are created in his image that's what genesis tells us we are created in the image of god praise the lord and god have a purpose and a reason for creating us. So we are created for a purpose and a reason. God was intentional when he was creating the world. When he was creating us, he was intentional and he was purposeful. Praise the Lord. So be intentional. And one thing we need to understand that don't let anyone tell you that you are infinitesimal species. No, you are not created. You are not created by an accident. Just understand that God has a purpose for you. We are created in the, in the likeness and the image of God. We're not of them that think we are made from baboon and from gorilla. You are not created from gorilla. God created you. The Bible says in the beginning, God created us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So today, we're going to examine how to be intentional. Praise the Lord. How to be intentional. And God will help us. We are not, like I said, we are not an accident waiting to happen. We are not. God ordained us. He has a reason for us. God has a plan for you. He has a plan for you and I. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 29 says, For I know the thought I think towards you, says the Lord, thought of good and not evil, to give you a future and to give you a hope. So God has a plan. He was intentional. He was strategic when he created you. But I love that scripture in Amplify. Let's read. Amplify Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He says, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you. God was speaking. He says, I know the plans and the thought I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of peace, plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster, to give you a future and to give you a hope. I love that. A plan for peace and well-being and not for disaster. Praise the Lord. God is in control. God is in control. So we have to be intentional. Psalm 139 verse 14 also says, it says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am marvelous at your works. I repeat. It says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works 
and that my soul knows very well. So you were created intentionally with a purpose in mind. You were, you are, you are, I'm fearfully, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you fearfully and wonderfully. You are marvelous. Uh, marvelous at God's works. Praise the Lord. So our God is a God of intentional. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of definite. He has a plan and he has a reason. Praise the Lord. So if God is a God of intentional, then we ought to be intentional. Praise the Lord. So this morning, we're going to examine be intentional. What does it mean to be intentional? The word definition of intentional means done with intention. Something done with purpose or with design. Praise the Lord. Something planned, something premeditated. Not just an accident or just something just try and error. No, God was intentional when he created us. Praise the Lord. Also, I found out it's also, he, he, intentional also means you have a clear purpose and an intention about taking actions on your thoughts and feelings that are most important to you when you embrace an intentional focus you choose to live and create a life that has a clear purpose and is meaningful and exciting to you praise the lord i love that a life of intention of being intentional is a life that is exciting is a life of purposeful is a life of meaningful not just Try and error going through the motion, but God will help us. Being intentional. So, to be intentional, the first thing, point we have to examine is that we should not live our life by default. So many people live a life of default, a life, a life of status quo. When I say default, you're just living through the motion. You're going through the motion. But we need to live a life that is strategic, a life that is intentional. When we live by default, life is boring. But when we live by intentional, with purposeful, meaningful, God will help us. Praise the Lord. Number two, to be intentional, spiritual growth and maturity requires an intentional effort. If you want to grow spiritually and you want to be mature in the Lord, you've got to be intentional. Not a baby Christian that everything goes. No, you've got to be intentional about what you, what you feed your spirit. Praise the Lord. What you say, spiritual growth and maturity require us being intentional effort. It is a purpose-based decision. It is a purpose-based decision. You have to make decision based on the kingdom. Colossians 3, 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The word of God, let it dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonition one another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, and making a melody unto God, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Colossians 3, 16. Very powerful scripture. Let the word of God dwell within you richly. The question is, how do you allow the word of God to dwell in you richly? So that leads me that you got to be intentional. You have to be intentional if you want the word of God to dwell in you richly. You got to take time to study the word. Take time to pray. Take time to fellowship with God. We got to set time aside. We have to be intentional. Praise the Lord. Also, some people might need to increase the time that they spend with God or in the word. Others might just need to start. But you, we need to cultivate an habit of daily reading the Bible. We need to cultivate. No matter how small, five minutes, 10 minutes, just start studying the word. Give attention to the word. Proverbs says, my son, attend to my word and incline your ears unto my saying. Be intentional about building a spiritual powerhouse, about building for the kingdom. You gotta be intentional. It's not gonna happen by accident. Maturity, spiritual growth is by being intentional. Praise the Lord. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Like I said earlier, God, our God is not a God of accident. He's not a God of accident. He's very strategic and very purposeful. Praise the Lord. He's not a God of accident. Nothing happens to him by chance. Many times people look at this coronavirus and things like that and ask the question, where is God? 
God is a God of purpose. Coronavirus is from, is from the pits of hell. It's from the devil. But God knows. He's not, he's not catching by surprise or an accident. He knew. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning and from ancient times. Praise the Lord. So, coronavirus is not an accident to God. So, God is, our God is not a God of accident. Nothing happens by chance to him. He's a God of purpose and intention. Praise the Lord. God knows all things. That's why we call him God of omniscience. He knows all things. Also, we also call him omnipresence. He's everywhere. He knows all things and he's everywhere. Omniscience and omnipresence. Praise the Lord. So our God is a God of intention. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4, 13. He says, nothing in all creation is hidden from God. You can't hide anything from God. It's everywhere and he knows everything. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he's the one to whom we are accountable. Praise the Lord. Many times people forget that we are accountable to God. They make decision and action that is displeasing to God. At one time, you will give an account of your service. Praise of your stewardship. You will give an account. We are all accountable to God. Praise the Lord. So nothing is hid from God. So we've got to be intentional. Number four. When you are intentional, it will lead you to be focused and purposeful. Being intentional will lead to being focused and purposeful. We've got to be intentional in what we do. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1. He says, if then you were raised with Christ, if that is true, you were raised, raised with Christ, is admonish, admonishing us to seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. If it is true, then we need to be purposeful. We need to focus our attention on God, on things where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2 says, set your mind on things above and not on the things on earth, not on earthly things. Set your mind on things above. Verse 3 says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members. He says, be intentional. He says, we should therefore put something you have to do, you have to be intentional about. You have to put to death members which are unheard. Example, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Verse 7. In which you yourself once walk when you live in them. But now, you yourself have to put off. You've got to be intentional. You have to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Filthy language out of your mouth. You've got to be intentional. Praise the Lord. Verse 9. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man which is thee. And verse 10. And have put on. You have to put on the Spirit of God and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Colossians is telling us here that we have to be purposeful. We have to put aside anger, malice, Back, backbiting. We have to put it aside. Praise the Lord. Jealousy. So many things. We need to put it aside. And then he went on to say that we should put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. In the knowledge of God. We need to put on the new man. But God will help us in the name of Jesus. So the Bible is saying that we have to be intentional. And the Holy Spirit will help us. Praise the Lord. It's not going to be overnight, but it's something you have to watch. You have to, your language, what you say, what you, what, uh, not using curse word. You have to watch your anger. Praise the Lord. God will help us in Jesus' name, being intentional. When you are intentional, you will live a life of grace. Because when you are intentional, you are aware in pleasing God. 
then you will live a life of grace. The Holy Spirit of God, help me. It's not by my strength. It's by your grace. But you got to be purposeful and intentional in pleasing God. Praise the Lord. So being intentional, number one, I said, we should not live by default. Default is just living anyhow, going through the motion. We need to be intentional. Number two, spiritual growth and maturity require us being intentional. An intentional effort, something we have to put. Number three, God is not a God of accident. Nothing happens by, to him by chance. He's a God of purpose and intention. Praise the Lord. God is omniscience and is omnipotent presence. Number four, be intentional will lead you to being focused and purposeful. So, number five, if you want to have a greater impact in the kingdom of God, and living a spiritual legacy, you got to be intentional. It's a plan. Imagine someone that wants to build a house and hasn't counted the cost. Doesn't know if you have enough money to buy or not. It's just a fool. Because people will laugh at him. That's what the Bible says. So if you want to build a castle, a mansion, whatever you want to build, you start counting the cost. Okay, how much is it going to cost me to build these things? Praise the Lord. So for us to have greater impact in God's kingdom, we have to be intentional and we have to count the cost. Number six, being intentional, we have, to be, we have to be intentional with relationship and friendship that you form and network that you establish. The people, your environment, people you surround yourself with, you have to be intentional about it. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, it says, do not be deceived. Evil companies corrupt evil manners, or corrupt good habits. Evil communication, corrupt, good manners. Praise the Lord. The new translation says, evil company corrupts good habits. No matter your intention, if you are surrounded with bad influence, they will influence you and they will corrupt you. So, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. We have to be intentional with the people we surround ourselves with, the people we walk, we move with, the people we share with. I'm not saying you should stop having friends, have friends, but the people, your inner circle, you've got to be intentional about those people. Praise the Lord. You have to be intentional with what you say or in your speech. You have to be intentional in your speech. You have to be intentional. The Bible says in in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Let your conversation be gracious and, attract and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Your conversation, what you say. New, uh, New King James Version says, Let your speech always, I love that, be with grace and season with salt. Let your speech, what you say, be always, not sometimes, be always with grace and season with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Sometimes, I'm sure you've seen people, in the midst of sentence, they will just stop. Because if you know you're about to say something that you regret, just stop. You don't have to say it. You don't have to just take it in. Praise the Lord. So, be intentional about what you say in your speech. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, And now... New Living Translation. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Whatever is excellent and worthy of praise, those are the things we need to think about. So, be intentional, with what you say. What you say is so important. Praise the Lord. Words are like egg, eggs. Once spoken, it's difficult to retrieve back. So be careful. Slow to speak. Quick to hear. Be intentional. Praise the Lord. Also, we have to be intentional with our, what and how you hear. What and how you hear. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Luke, Chapter 8, verse 18. New Living Translation also. It says, so pay attention to how you hear. 
you got to pay attention to how you hear. Don't just allow everything to just filter in. Don't just let everything just comes in your spirit, man. You have to filter what you hear. Sometimes you have to walk away from certain things. Don't just garbage in, garbage out. So you have, uh, KJV says, take heed how you hear. You have to be intentional to take heed. Simply means to be careful. Take heed, be intentional. What you hear, how you hear it, what you say, how you say it. You have to be intentional. Let your word be seasoned with grace. Praise the Lord. I'm full of grace and be seasoned with salt. Praise the Lord. So, he says, so pay attention to how you hear. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But to those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. So, be careful what you hear, how you hear it. Praise the Lord. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Also, as parents, we have to be intentional in raising our children. As parents, we have to be intentional, intentional in raising our children up. Raise them up in in godly manner. The Bible says, raise, raise up a child in the way that he should go. And then when he grows up, he will not depart from it. We have to be intentional, purposeful, strategic in raising up our children. Also, lastly, live intentional. Even at your job, the way you live your life, live intentional. But recognize that God has placed you where you are for a reason and for a purpose. The Bible says all, all good gift, a perfect gift comes from above. And it comes from Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. When the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. That's why we have to be intentional with what we do, with what we have, how we, how we, how we give it out, how, how, what we do with what we have. Especially where you are working. God places you there for a purpose and a reason. So that's why you have to be intentional. Not just anything goes. Praise the Lord. So, we've seen areas where we need to be intentional. Our God is a God of purpose. It was very strategic and very intentional. So, we have no choice but to be intentional. Praise the Lord. But let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15. Ephesians 5, 15. He says, See then that you walk circumspectly. The word circumspectly simply means careful, prudent, discreetly. He says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He says, Be intentional. That's what he's simply saying. Be intentional. Be careful the way you walk. Don't walk like fool, but as wise. Verse 16 says, Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You have to understand. Praise the Lord. And I said, the word circumspectly means to be careful, to be prudent, and also discre discreetly. Discreetly. You have to be discreet in what you do. Praise the Lord. And God will help us. But let's look at the Amplified Translation of Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 17. The Amplified says, Therefore, see that you walk carefully. Then he says, living life with honor. To live a life of honor is being intentional, the way you live. Living life with honor, purpose, and courage. Shunning those who tolerate and enable evil. Shun, run from them. Those who tolerate and enable evil. Not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people. Verse 16. It says, making the very most of your time. You are going to make the very most of your time if you are being intentional. Making the very most of your time on heart. Recognizing that and taking advantage of every opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence redeeming the time the days are, are evil taking advantage of every opportunity praise the lord and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil verse 17 therefore do not be foolish 
and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Praise the Lord. What a powerful translation. It says we should walk carefully, living with a life, living a life with honor, purpose, and courage. And then it says we should shun those who tolerate and enable evil. Don't be amongst them. Don't live like them. If you do and you don't and you tolerate it, it's just a matter of time. They will corrupt you. Praise the Lord. So you can see the Bible admonishes us to be intentional, intentional in every area of our life. You have to be purposeful. Don't just act on emotions. Don't just act on impulse. Stop, count the cost. Okay, what is the plan of God for this? What is the purpose of this? Praise the Lord. Be intentional in your relationship with God, in pleasing God. Be intentional. Ask the question, will this thing please God? Will this thing honor God? When we live a life like that, God will help us. The Holy Spirit will help us in Jesus' name. And that scripture I want us to look at is, and I mentioned that is Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 to 6. He says, continue earnestly in prayer. He says, continue in prayer, earnestly in prayer. Be intentional. Be vigilant in it with thanksgiving. So you can see how Paul was admonishing the Colossians to be intentional. Continue earnestly. Don't stop. Continue earnestly in prayer. Being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us. He also saw because he was a man that knows the plan of God for himself. He said, please also continue to pray for us. That God will open to us a door for the world. This is a man that knows his calling. He knows that he needs an open doors. He said, continue praying for us. Pray earnestly. Be vigilant with thanksgiving. And don't forget to continually pray for us that God will open doors so that we can preach the word. He says, doors for the word to speak the mystery of, of Christ, for which I am also a chain. It means he's, he's a slave to the word. This is a man that is intentional. He knows his calling. He knows his purpose. He knows why God calls him. So he pursued. He was intentional in fulfilling God's purpose and pleasing God. Verse 4. He says that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Verse 5. Walk with wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your, verse 6 says, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. New Living Translation says, like, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attract so that you will have the right to respond for everyone. Everyone. A life of purpose, intentionality, is, is, it pleases God. A life that you're going to be purposeful in what you do. Let's take our first case. Let's take our case study. And then we see, and then probably try and round up. Case study, life of intention, to be intentional. Living a life of purpose. Living a life full of purpose. Second Kings chapter 18 from verse 1. We see the story of Ezekiah, how he became king, how intentional he was in pleasing God. From verse 1, we read through verse 8. Now it came to pass in the third year of Uzziah, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Ezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. So, Ezekiah reigned during the time of Elah, Uzziah, the son of Elah. Uzziah was reigning in Israel, but Ezekiah was reigning in Judah. That was when there was division between Israel and Judah. So one headquarters was in Jerusalem, the other one was ruling in Judah. So, so Ezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Watch his qualities. Verse 2. He was 25 years old. When he began, when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, 
the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Can you see that? It was intentional. He did. He did, just, he did not just live his life recklessly. He did not just live by default. The Bible recorded that he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. To do what was right in the sight of the Lord takes, takes you to be intentional. You say, okay, this is what pleases God. I'm going to live like this. So, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that his father, David, had done, he must have researched the way David lived. And then he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, being intentional. Verse 4. And watch again what he did. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses has made. For until those days, the children of Israel burn incense to it and call it Nehushtan. So what, was, what did he do? What the Bible recorded he did was that he destroyed, he removed all their high places, all the places, he broke all the images where they worship other gods, all these foreign gods, all the tools that they use. He destroyed and burned everything down. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillar. Anything that doesn't please God, the Bible says he cut down the wooden images and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. There was a serpent God gave a word to Moses. And that when anybody in Israel, because they were getting sick and they were dying, they would be beaten by snake and they were dying. And so Moses asked God and God told him to erect this bronze serpent. And that when anyone is sick or is beaten by snake, look unto these things and they will be healed. So, and over the years, what was meant to be a blessing to them became a cause because they started worshipping. God will help us. That's how some of us are. We worship idols and we don't know. Anything that we exalted above God is idol. So, we need to be strategic and intentional. Praise the Lord. So, it destroyed everything and burned incense to it and called it Nehushtan. Verse 5. The Bible says he trusted in the Lord of Israel, being intentional. This is not the norm. This is not how the people ahead of him reigned. They did not trust God. They did not believe in God. They were just living recklessly, but he was intentional in his reign. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him. Among all the kings of Judah, not who were before him. Verse 6. For he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him. But he kept his commandments, which the Lord has commanded Moses. This was someone that wanted to yearn in pleasing God. He was intentional in the way he reigned and he approached it. He approached his reign. Verse 7. The Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. Verse 8. He subdued Philistines as far as Gaza and his territory from Watchtower to Fortify City. What a testimony about Ezekiah. What a testimony. This was a man that is focused. He was very intentional. He destroyed. He, he loved God. He first did what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Not only doing what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord, that wasn't just enough. He had to destroy every idol worshipping houses and things that they used. He destroyed it because once he destroyed, he wants to get the people's attention back to God. He destroyed to let them understand that this thing will not save you. These things, these gods will not help you. So he destroyed and burned the thing they've been worshipping that they call Nehushtan. He destroyed. And not only that, the Bible recorded that he trusted in the Lord God of Israel. And before him there was none, on, and also after him, because he reigned by relying on God. He did not depart from following God. He held fast unto God, being intentional. And not only that, he kept the commandment of the Lord, which Moses gave them. He followed. For you to keep God's commandment simply means you have to inquire he was intentional about studying the word. He inquired God's word. And then he was intentional about keeping those words. 
No wonder the Lord was with him. No wonder the Lord prospered him. Why? Because he was he, he did not live his life recklessly. He did not live his life be by default. He lived by pleasing God. Praise the Lord. God will help us as we learn from Ezekiah. He did not serve any other God. He did not pay homage. He served God and God was with him. Church, we need to live a life that is intentional. Intentional. Being intentional. Being purposeful in whatever we do. Take time out to study God's word, inquire God's word. We need to let the word of God dwell in us richly with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in the Lord, in psalms, in hymns, in everything, singing and making melody unto the Lord. We need to let the word of God, we need to soak ourselves in the word of God to know the will and purpose of God. We need to the word of God in our spirit man. We need to find time. We need to be purposeful. I, I, I'll share this test. You have to be purposeful in, in your life. Let me share this quick testimony. Um, so uh, Friday we had night vigil. But I was so tired and I know I was, I was going to pray on night vigil. But what, I, what you have to do is that you have to be intentional. I know I wanted to rest. I know I have to, I have to prepare and also pray to lead the people. So I said, let me go sleep for about 40 minutes or 30 minutes. And I know if I'm not intentional about it, I will, I, 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 I will sleep till the, next, till the next day. So I have to set my alarm clock. You have to be intentional. Whether 15, 20 minutes, whatever time you have, you have to be intentional studying the word. You have to set a reminder. Be intentional about live the way you live your life. Let your life, live a life that is pleasing unto God. Don't live a riotous living. Don't live a life just recklessly, by default, just floating, just going through the motion. Those does not please God. So church, we need to be strategic. We need to be purposeful. We need to be intentional. Our God is a God of intentional. God is very strategic. Nothing happens to God by accident or to us by accident. God knows all things. It's, the Bible says it's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. For he changeth not. He's not a man that should lie, neither the son of man that should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? As he spoke in it, will he not make it good? Living a life of purpose, being intentional. I want to encourage you, church. We need to rise beyond the fray. We need to live beyond the fray. We need to be intentional with what we say, with what we hear, and what we do. Praise the Lord. Sometimes if you have to stop midway and just stop speaking because you're about to say something stupid, you have to do what you got to do. Praise the Lord. Then you have to filter your spirit, man. What you hear, you've got to take heed what you hear, how you hear it. Praise the Lord. And as we do that, you will see the power of God. You will see the power of God in your life. And then we start being a force in the kingdom of God. Church, we have to be intentional. And as we do so, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. We can't do it by ourselves. We need the grace of God. And God has given us his grace. God's grace, through the help of the Holy Spirit, because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can overcome. It's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of God. But we have to be intentional in our decision making. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you because your word will not return to you void. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that we'll be a doer of your word and not just hearers only. Father, thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word that will be, we'll be intentional in pleasing you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We worship and we adore you. Be thou glorified, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Church, I hope you are blessed by that word. Be intentional. Be intentional. You have to be intentional with your work with God. It will help you to become spiritually, spiritually, your spiritual growth, you have to be intentional. Spiritual maturity, you got to be intentional all about it. And as you do that, you see yourself growing in bound in in so much in the lord of in the lord and god will fight your battles for you and god will take you to places that will exceed your expectation in the name of jesus and god will bless you 
I pray that you have a wonderful week and God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. In our lives, it's important to note that success is always the result of following the leading of the Holy Spirit. God is truly interested in every aspect of our lives. Remember that God wants us to prosper and to enjoy success as we follow his plan for us. Jesus tells us in John 10.10 in the Amplified Version that the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. No matter how long it takes to reap the benefits of your obedience to God, it always pays to follow his leading. If you learn to follow his voice in all situations, you'll find that you always come out victorious and experience the abundant life that Christ promised in John 10.10. 10. Join us for Bible study on Zoom Tuesday at 7 p.m. as we learn to listen obediently to the voice of God. See you Tuesday. Tomorrow marks the start of a new month and a fresh opportunity to dedicate ourselves to God. Join in for this month's Fasting and Prayer Weekend. The theme for the month of March is God is Our Strength. Starting this Friday, March 5th, we'll meet on the phone line to pray at 7 p.m. and again this Saturday, March 6th, to pray at 6 p.m. Come expectant to receive his strength and may God bless you as you do so. Hello Church, I'm very, very happy and excited by the word that we have received this morning. It's indeed a word that is due in season. I pray that this word will be spirit unto us, it will be life unto us. This word will encourage us for the days and years ahead of us. I pray that this week will be a glorious week for each and every one of us. And I pray that you, you just continue to be encouraged, knowing that our Lord is a covenant-keeping God. He's a God that never fails us. What he says he will do, he always does. And I just want you to know that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. God bless you, and I pray that this week will be a glorious and fulfilling week for you in Jesus' mighty name.